Hello, this is Vesso from Chaos. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how we can inspect our scenes and determine what parts take longer to render. We will also look at several methods to optimize our scenes so we can reduce render time. First, we'll start by exploring the V-Ray Profiler tool and how we can use it to determine what parts of the scene are taking longer to render. After that, we'll try to optimize our scene by reducing geometry poly count and adjusting heavy to compute shaders, such as the ones that use opacity maps. With all that being said, let's get started. Here in Maya, we have a simple scene to work with. The first thing we need to do before we render our scene is to enable the V-Ray Profiler tool. This way, we can analyze the results after the rendering is done and make some decisions about optimizing the scene. The V-Ray Profiler tool can be found in the Render Settings window, under the Settings tab. In the System Rollout, there are several submenus, one of which is the V-Ray Profiler. By default, its mode is set to Off. We can enable it by choosing a mode from the Profiler drop-down menu. There are two options available, System and All. The System mode is tracking the render preparations and the overall render time. The all mode is tracking everything the system mode tracks, plus the time spent in sampling all of the shading, materials and volumetrics, and breaking down the different types of calculations down for each shader, such as GI, reflections, refractions and so on. Let's choose all, so we can have the full picture to look at. We can control the trace depth using the max depth slider and also choose a location where to store the profiler information file. Once we have the profiler all set up, we need to render out our image in production mode, either progressive or bucket. I have the scene set up to be using the bucket sampler mode, so I can go ahead and click on the render button in the frame buffer. The rendering process takes quite a bit of time, so for the sake of speeding things up, I'll fast forward to the end of it. As you can see, this single frame took 6 minutes 23 seconds to complete. Now we can go ahead and click on the show last profile button which will load the V-Ray Profiler data into our browser. Basically, the information is illustrated in the form of boxes, where the width of each box corresponds to the time it has taken to complete. From left to right, we have the timeline on the very top. As you can see, the data is divided into two main groups. The one on the top shows all of the pre-rendering activities, such as plugin initialization, geometry compilation, building light cache, and so on. And then, it shows the time taken for the actual image to render. We can use the navigation tools located on the right-hand side to zoom in and out, and also pan around. Let me zoom in on the pre-rendering process so we can examine it further. The Frame Begin box is illustrating all of the pre-rendering processes. The line below shows a breakdown of all the actions that happen within the Frame Begin. Here, we can notice a bunch of small boxes in the beginning, then we have the geometry compilation and the ray server build. As you can see here, the geometry compilation is taking the biggest chunk of time in the whole pre-rendering process. We can try to find out what exactly is in this process and try to optimize it. On the line below the geometry compilation, we can see what it contains. There are several nodes named cliff shape. It is always a good idea to name all of the objects and materials in your scene, not just for easier navigation, but also will help a lot using the V-Ray Profiler. Back to the scene, I know that the cliff shape objects are those cliffs alongside the river. They are low poly objects with V-Ray displacement applied to them. We can try to lower the displacement quality and render again to see if there is an improvement. Under the subdivision and displacement quality section, we can make a few adjustments. Let's increase the edge length to 4, which would effectively lower the quality of the displacement. We can also enable the view-dependent checkbox. When enabled, the edge length parameter determines the maximum length of subtriangle edge in pixels. We can also decrease the number of maximum subdivisions. I'll go ahead and lower it to 5. I'll also do the exact same thing for the rest of the cliff objects. The one in the middle will have the exact same settings and the one on the right hand side, which is also the one that is the closest to the camera, will have a slightly higher amount of max subdiffs. 
I'll keep this one at 10, because it is closer to the camera and it might need a little more detail. Alright, let's go ahead and render again. Now, we can compare the results against the previous one and see if our actions help with optimizing the scene or not. The scene looks almost identical, even though we've lowered the amount of geometry generated by the displacement significantly. It finished in 5 minutes 32 seconds this time. This is almost a minute faster. This is a good sign that we've managed to optimize the scene quite a bit. Let's see the profile or log file again. As you can notice, the geometry compilation block is significantly smaller now. That's great. Looking below, we have a breakdown of all the materials in the scene and what amount of time each is taking. We have two materials that are standing out from the rest, each taking more than 50% of render time. The river material is a water material, very reflective and also refractive. It takes quite a bit of space in the image, that is why it contributes to such a big percentage. The next material is the shader for the reeds. This one takes a whole 19% of render time. Let's take a look at that material and see if we can optimize it. If I select one of the reeds, you can clearly see that each leaf is in a square shape in terms of object geometry. But in the rendered image, the leaves are pointed towards the end. That already gives us a clue that there must be an opacity map used in the shading of the leaves. If we inspect the material of the reeds, we can clearly see that opacity map. Usually, when we have multiple opacity maps overlying each other, that can lead to slower render times. So, instead of using the opacity map approach, let's use a tool designed to target issues like that. If we go in the V-Ray menu and then Tools, we can find a tool called Opacity Cutout. The Opacity Cutout tool converts low-poly opacity mapped objects to actual geometry cutouts. The tool is very simple to use. All we need to do is to select all of the read objects and then we can simply click on the Create Cutout. We can switch the quality preset if needed, but in our case here, I think the default quality preset of Medium would work just fine. Once the process is done, you can see that the Opacity Cutout tool created new geometry for every leaf, which essentially makes the use of an opacity map unnecessary. Now, we can click on the Detach Opacity Texture to remove the opacity map from the material. Finally, we can render our image one final time and see if there is an improvement in the reads material and also in the overall render time. As you can see, we have improved the render time even further. Now we are at 4 minutes 55 seconds, shaving off another 40 seconds. Let's also look at the V-Ray profile lock again. There is a clear improvement, lowering the render time for the reads material down to 12% from the original 19%. In this video, we went over the V-Ray Profiler tool, how to use it to analyze our scene and find out what areas are slowing down the render time. We've also used that information to make a couple of optimizations to the scene, which eventually lowered the render time significantly. It all depends on the scene that you're working with, but in this particular scene, we've managed to lower the render time by 23% using the V-Ray Profiler tool to show us where we can optimize the scene. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and helpful. Thank you for watching.